Ruth is a designer and writer who is continually inspired by God's depth of creativity. From a young age, she has enjoyed anything creative, from fashion to photography, self-directed plays to songwriting, designing to painting, and the list goes on. She is currently working as a teacher in South Korea and today is sharing her take on the power of this year's theme, Proclamation. She calls her piece God of Angel Armies. We all know the infamous story of David and Goliath. If I had to ask you what weapon David used to slay Goliath, we would agree that he used a slingshot and a rock, right? Correct. But we have to ask, is that the only resource David has on his side? Let me intrigue you with a new and particular revelation I recently learned through a sermon from Jackie Hill Perry. 1 Samuel 17.41 sets the scene. Goliath and David are on the battlefield. Goliath has resources, weapons, height and history. David is a little more than a boy, lacking Saul's armor, carrying a rock and a slingshot. If I were watching this scene portrayed on the big screen in a movie theatre, I would be fearful for David, comparing their resources through my fleshly eyes. But David knew not to submit to fear through comparison. By viewing the battle with confidence in God, knowing well that God has prepared him, he says the following in verse 48, Pay attention to their resources. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a resource, with a spear, a resource, and a javelin, a resource. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, a resource, the God of the armies of Israel. David has a weapon that Goliath doesn't have the Lord of Hosts. The name Lord of Hosts is a military description of God, Lord of Heaven's armies. It conveys the sense that God is a warrior who will fight cosmic and earthly battles on behalf of his people. There's this story in 1 Samuel 1 where this word pops up for the first time. Hannah is one of Elkanah's two wives. The other, Penina, has given birth to Elkanah's children, but Hannah remained childless. She is infertile, and because of that, she carries with her shame, angst and sadness. She goes to the temple where her emotions and heartache are poured out to God. She says in verse 11, O Lord of hosts, please look on the affliction of your servant very first time God is personally referred to as the Lord of hosts is by an infertile woman in prayer. And why would she call God that name? She could have called him God, Lord or the Creator. She could have called him anything, but she chose the name she knew would inform her faith and change how she prayed. Hannah recognized something we too need to acknowledge that sometimes we need to call on the military God, the God of angel armies, who has all resources at his disposal. If he made the body, then he can heal it. If he is life, then he can give life. And let's say, hypothetically speaking, God decides not to. He can also give joy in the midst of sorrow. That's a resource. We face battles in this physical life. For David, it was a literal battle. For Hannah, it was the physical and emotional burden of infertility. Maybe your battle is centered around your marriage, parenting, social pressures or health. We also face spiritual battles that we do not see nor fully understand. And that is why we need a God and we have a God who will fight for us, overcoming every enemy and challenge. He will fight for you, even emotionally. He's a defender of his people. Whatever it is, may 2024 be a year in which we remain steadfast in proclamation, calling on the Lord of hosts, our resource in battle.